time. Okay, uh, welcome everyone to first Ethereum meetup here uh, in Vienna. Record it, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's recorded. Okay. Um, so what we're going uh, wanted to achieve today is to get a good feeling about uh, the community here in Vienna, to get to know each other, and uh, to uh, let's say raise the understanding of the whole ecosystem quite a bit. Uh, I will try my best to give some overview and uh, let's see how far we can get. And uh, for the timetable, it looks like this, that in an hour, plus minus, we have a, a Skype meeting with uh, Mihai Alisi, which, uh, who is a, a, a developer. And then we can, can go into details, some applications we have provided. Uh, yeah. So let's start just with my introduction. Uh, of course, interrupt me anytime you want. Okay, continue. Wait. Yeah. Uh, I want to start with, well, what makes uh, Bitcoin so popular and what makes it functioning right now. Uh, because actually Ethereum is an evolution of, of the system which is Bitcoin and I try to visualize it. So what you basically have in the, in the, in the crypto ledger is uh, the accounting information. So every, every address has uh, a fixed number of tokens, you can transfer that. And <coughs> secondly, the, the system which incentivizes people to, to uh, solve, to let's say secure these numbers. So they are scarce, they are transferable, and the incentive system well, makes people uh, invest actually close to one billion uh, dollars in hardware to solve this lottery of proof of work. Um, a few years uh, passed already, people tried to think about uh, other applications of this technology. Uh, not merely a, a number, a token in, in, a, in a constant number, but also some meta functionality. Let's click here. And they came up with some uh, additional stuff which you can still put into the ecosystem, into the data structure, into this ledger of Bitcoin. And some projects are, for example, color coins, where you uh, save <coughs> metadata in each, in each unspent transaction, which is well kind of the, the coins. So this amount. And because you can color them, you could encode if, uh, another meaning to it. So for example, one can agree that one Bitcoin at this amount, uh, in this time, is a share in the company. And what you basically have with the same transaction processes, uh, you can transfer shares, or whatever. So it's up to your imagination. Uh, another thing is MetaCoin, uh, similar in a way. Uh, Multisig is another functionality added. In, two years ago to, to Bitcoin, which allows you to have access. Hello, guys. Hi. Please try to find some space somewhere. Yeah, there are additional chairs outside if you, um, if you want. Philip uh, uh, is not here, uh, but he wants to attend. Uh, and he asked me to uh, uh, make a bridge, uh, a number bridge. Uh, okay. So I mean, we're recording. It's also. We're recording. So, yeah, it's very good. I see. You can feel free. I mean, everyone is informed. It's recorded. So, this is a two way communication. Or how to answer? Okay, I see. You will be our, our uh, communicator in this room. Okay, just to recap for the people who just came, uh, basically I'm describing the Bitcoin system. Many of you may be aware of it, uh, how it functions with the two parts, the incentivized mining and the crypto ledger, 
which is immutable, and some additions which have which uh, crept into the system. Um, well, the idea was now to to see all these additional mini projects and uh, put them all together in a in a in a new system which can emulate all these functions and more what has not been thought of yet. So this is basically a theorem. Please continue. So what you have is the same building blocks. You have an internal currency uh, epitomized by by this uh, by a ledger signifying the the, the the currency called ether. And the new thing is you can see right here is the concept of a contract. And what a contract is, it has an address. It has a balance on its own. It has a storage also contained in each of one contract. There, there are infinitely uh, amount of contracts possible. And uh, the most important thing, what they have is code. So all of those things combined into one separate object. Um, please continue. So with this code, with the storage, and with this balance, it's basically can live on its own. And that's the, the, the whole purpose. Uh, people can see the, the, uh, the things which are inside this contract every time, just as everyone can see how much unspent coins are there in Bitcoin right now. You can see the code, the balance, and what's stored. And how do these contracts actually do some work? Well, quite simply, uh, normally you have transactions from A to B, let's say, nothing <coughs> happens, so from wallet to wallet. However, if you, if you do a transaction to a contract, it's receiving also the coins, that's one thing, and then it uh, runs the code. So each time you transfer uh, 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 some value to it, it will run this code. And uh, it's, uh, it goes, in, it goes um, even farther than this, it can man manipulate its own code. So whoever is in control of this contract, can uh, grow it to whatever he or she is intending to do. Because this code is as secure as the transactions of the tokens we know from Bitcoin, uh, you can trust in the execution of this code and the results will be determinable by everyone. So it's, um, it takes a lot uh, of uncertainty away uh, if you think in, in the traditional forms of law. That's why I put it here, it's the Vitaly called it, uh, named it in this way, it's called crypto law, because basically what you do in this code, uh, it's the only authority which decides what happens. No one else. So this code uh, also enables, well, escrow services, uh, prediction markets, the tokens, what we have with, uh, with uh, colored coins, but uh, uh, extendable to whatever you want. And once this system is working, the cost of adding such tokens, what you dream up, what you come up with, is minimal compared to, to color coins which are always packed into this uh, ecosystem and are limited to, well, one additional information, basically. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the first use cases, it depends of course where you're coming from, but the first use case probably in the financial world, uh, what Ethereum can disrupt more uh, efficiently than, than Bitcoin now in itself are numerous. Just imagine for example a savings account with Bitcoin, you, you have one person who has the private keys and this is the person who is in charge. Whoever has this private key and the public key to it 
uh, can do whatever he or she wants with it, and therefore you are living quite on the edge. It's risky. Uh, you know it when you transfer it to, let's say, a, a centralized exchange. You know, everyone knows what, what can happen. Uh, they are uh, full. They are under full control of these bitcoins. If you have your life savings in Bitcoin, well, you can do a lot of stuff. You can print out the, the, the paper, wallets, and so on. But you have always a single point of failure. And for example, what you could do is a savings account uh, where you transfer your coins to a contract, which then manages who can get out the money. Uh, so for example, you can have your spouse and you are in charge of the contract and only if you both agree then you can transfer all the money out, <laughs> yeah, for example. Otherwise, one party only could, let's say, withdraw a uh, hundred dollar worth of, of uh, ether every day. Uh, the beauty is, of course, in, 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 in theft cases, if you lose something, uh, you can still uh, counter this, this effect of, of either having it or not having it. So basically you entrust the system with it. You don't need a central trusted authority as with a bank, for example. And then what you can have, every thinkable uh, financial contract there is hedging. So you can, uh, you can write contracts for futures, uh, you can speculate in, uh, in prediction markets, who is going to win the next presidential election and so on. <clears throat> and basically, uh, this is also already possible now, but with a system like this, you have very much lower barriers of entry, plus other things. Uh, actually, all these financial contracts have been analyzed, how they exist today, and there are uh, 32 basic building blocks of who earns what when and uh, so it's quite um, a new way to approach these things to have it once and forever in code and uh, deployable worldwide and as I said the transaction cost should be lower yet. So just so I understand you correctly um, with, with this with the theory the two of us could uh, set up a contract and who will win the next presidential election and then um, the contract itself will execute and determine the winner. Exactly. But and we don't need this. Yeah. But where does the data come from? Exactly. This, this is the... So that's the who right? actually won. Exactly. So if you think about this enclosed system, everything works fine. As long as you access information on the blockchain, you don't have to worry about trusting some input values. However, to extend the ecosystem, oh, hello. Yeah, let's wait for them to settle. You can have the VIP seat. Also. So next time we just move the tables. So next time we will uh, main room. in the main room. That's true. Feel right? Hello. 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 Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you can move the should, should the, we move the, the center table now. Okay. Mm. Um, it's going to disrupt this. No, I mean our table to the oh, right, okay. and they can sit behind right. them. I think we're okay it's sitting uh, here. Yeah. This is fine. Okay. So at least these people are uncomfortable. That's fine. Okay. okay. Uh, where did we stop? Yeah, with this. Uh, uh, the boundaries of the system. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you have everything determinable, which is what is on the blockchain. What you have on information is the time. So the timestamp, plus minus, depending on the mining algorithm. Uh, what you have is balances, of course. Uh, what you have are several, let's say, pseudo <coughs> random numbers, which you don't yet have, uh, are these outcomes of elections, for example. And this will be, well, there are several concepts which can crowd uh, source those information, and I'll come back to that later. Okay. How to grow the ecosystem, mm -hmm. basically. Um, yeah, this is about the financial stuff, please continue. I just want to make here a bigger picture of all this 
things. Uh, I, I call this the, on the left side the old accounting paradigm. Uh, over the like hundreds of years, we have accounting to to run businesses, to let businesses communicate their status to outsiders, uh, to uh, to decide on the payment on salaries and wages, and uh, all these accounting numbers have grown over the time uh, more and more um, complicated to to make a picture of the real world. To let's say they are, you can cheat on them basically. Yeah, there's a big time lag. Yeah, what, uh, There's a big time lag involved. By the, by the time I get the accounting of a company, exactly two years ago. That, exactly, yeah, right. Uh, so one thing is, of course, it's you can make fraud on there quite easily. And the more complex our world gets, the more inappropriate the system is. Uh, for example, the window dressing phenomenon. Uh, before a big announcement of a, of a public company. Uh, it's well known that uh, that the that, uh, CEO CFOs dress up their their values, what they have in the books, just to to look better. Uh, it's, uh, you can observe that there is so many discretion in all this. Uh, it uh, leads to all kind of of uh, problematic stuff. So it's obfuscated. It's not um, comprehensible from a, from outsider perspective anymore, because they have proprietary valuation functions. Yeah, these banks, any company also in some way, uh, they value their assets to what they think of is right. Mm. And everyone's of course incentivized to push them higher for their own returns. So we push the limits of this. And the compliance costs are rising. Uh, yeah, basically compliance guys are said to be paid for not looking into the uh, details instead of looking into the details actually. So we have collusion uh, effects of, uh, of auditors and, and companies. Well, you can engineer your own bonus. In Germany would say it's self yeah. Uh, this all leads to some, uh, some desperate measures like stress tests, what we have, because no one's knowing their real exposure with these complex instruments. And if all comes down to the truth, you have these contagious questions. Yeah? So all the time you're faking numbers or you're not very true or you're incentivized to do it in this way. Uh, you pay out uh, the wages, there is no real value, everyone agrees on a stat year, everything is fine, but in reality it's not. And then you have this uh, domino effect and the, the most like high level abstract thing, what I can say about this, it's one dimensional or low dimensional. You value everything as a, in money terms basically. Yeah, please. Yeah, I had um, a couple of questions. One of them is <clears throat> that fundamentally cryptocurrencies are still fiat currencies, aren't they? So, I, yeah. so no. how are they then, uh, are they somehow immune from like contagious crashes? I like the word actually contagious crashes, are they somehow immune from that or, or more resistant? It depends on very on the information in the whole system. It's at least transparent if they crash. Yeah. If, if a company inside, you don't see it. If a bank inside, you don't see it. But how is a cryptocurrency fiat currency? No, it's not so, it's it's not fiat. Fiat. Because are not fiat. There are some properties which actually are actually uh, deflationary. So fiat for me means that um, I have uh, it's representative. So gold is not a fiat currency. Gold is yeah. real. No, it has no, an intrinsic value. No, 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 fiat no, 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 means no. by decree you are forced to use the currency. <coughs> this means fiat. fiat. And the government decides. Ah, oh, so the government says this is the currency. Not just that, yeah. but they can manipulate the the uh, the quantity of uh, money in circulation yeah. or um, mm. in the economy, which is what the Federal Reserve is doing right now. They're just pumping uh, money. Pressing, um, yeah, so that, that's been the case since, since the, then we got the oil. Yes, it's, yes. No, but that's okay. has always been the, like ever since the Bretton Woods and Gold Standard has been brought. Uh, I, I was watching something, uh, it's probably not that related, but it's 12 times more f fiat currency now than before the crisis, supposedly in the world, so they're yeah. really printing. 
quantitative easing. The, the core mm. issue is that even gold is deflationary. Um, in terms of that, you know, mobile phones are destroyed every year, millions, and, and there's gold in every one of them. So, and the same goes for Bitcoin. Um, you know exactly how many are going to be. I think 21 million by 2140 yeah. are going to be mined, and if you lose your hard disk with the Bitcoin on it, those are gone. I guess the, the point I wanted to make was that um, a bit better example is food. You can eat it, um, and it has intrinsic value. So you mean it's not tangible? Um, it's not necessarily tangible, because I think there are other things like information is not necessarily tangible and that has value. It's that this question about contagious crashes, is that less by virtue of being a cryptocurrency or not? I'm not convinced. Yeah, um, but I see I, what you The mean, yeah. points about fiat currency are really interesting. So. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe to put your point uh, into uh, another interpretation, uh, what you mean that basically without uh, the internet it's nothing more. Maybe you mean this way? No, really simple. Um, someone pays me. So, so I just bought a house a few months ago and that is a good context to think of this in. That house has value to me because I can live in it and I don't pay rent. And if the the euro goes up or down, that doesn't matter. The, the intrinsic value of that house is I don't have to pay rent. Yeah. Um, now, if I think of that in terms of a, a cryptocurrency, I can't live in a cryptocurrency, I can't eat it. Um, you can't buy your house with it. No, I can't buy my house with it. I have to be able to exchange the currency you know, you for something of okay. value. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think <laughs> guys, 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 the, the problem, the problem yeah. is you are missing the problem the of currencies no. today. We are here sure. today to yes. learn about the forum and its way to, to encode yeah, this yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You're want. missing the point that this system would create a system that solves your problem. You just have to code it. Okay. Okay, I'm pleased okay. to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Later. You can still yeah. have your house, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, but maybe this will come back uh, to what I'm saying now. Uh, what you have. Here, all the counting scheme, it's basically one-dimensional. You, you measure everything with costs and money. There is no such concept as reputation, really, in our system. There is no such concept as uh, being a philanthropist. It has value. You see that, okay, companies have human capital. But in essence, it's not, it's not in there in our uh, whole economy. That's why it's often forgotten about it. It's not necessary to make money to have this kind of concept. And what you can do with all this uh, programmatic way of things, you can actually account for this. You can have a reputation, you can have an identity, you can have multiple identities. And uh, everything can be, it doesn't have to be, but can be very transparent. That means uh, you are you're less able to dress up what it actually is. You have a better understanding of uh, uh, in the society what uh, the actual status of a company is, of an organization, <coughs> whatever. You can replace basically uh, human judgment on several uh, algorithmic auditing ideas. And everyone can do this with everyone. So there's just a consensus, a better infor informed uh, ecosystem possible. This would be, and this would also lead me now to the, to the next, uh, next part. Yes. So for me, it goes much further to money, as we know, it's a one dimensional thing. Uh, what we see with pure money and Bitcoin's potential is the remittance market where you have just exorbitant fees uh, which are extracted from the poorest of, uh, of, of mankind. Uh, Bitcoin can reduce this, already does it, although the sustainability is uh, another topic, we will come back later to it. However, Ethereum expands on these possibilities. As I said, you could have uh, whole um, groups who who work in the way of webs of trust, so you can install the bylaws of a of an organization in code. This can be democratic, autocratic, whatever you want. Uh, one idea is that the majority of you in a group can accept a new member or not. 
they can uh, democratically elect uh, to about the status of an individual, they can sanctionize by withdrawing the reputation. So this is uh, kind of a network effect on top of a trusted, uh, um, trusted computational programs. Uh, furthermore, what you can do is uh, public goods funding. So we all know Kickstarter and stuff like that. What you do, you make a claim, you try to attract the money from a lot of different people, you get something in return. Uh, with a more structured way how to do things and a, a trusted way to um, to keep keep uh, fraudulent behavior in check, uh, this concept can go much, 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 much further. Uh, and after you have some kind of public good, let's say uh, uh, someone made the car to go company on this DAO, uh, it's also a good way to govern these resources. Via smart properties, this is like science fiction. Uh, for example, you pay with your mobile phone a certain amount of ether to, to this DAO and it reserves uh, a car to you. And uh, yeah, well, basically there we are. <coughs> Uh, well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So Ether is going to be as a, as a transfer medium, as I understand. I mean, this is a blockchain, the major blockchain. Uh, yes, it's the liquidity layer underneath everything works and the, also the currency you pay for to execute these contracts. So it, it is a, it, it, you consider it as a currency, you would consider So it means it needs a specific amount of hashing power that it's not well, the brothers, all the other existing national coins right now. Yes, uh, the proof of something is uh, you can advance it on top of uh, on top of uh, contract com computation, namely that you can go away from uh, purely hashing. Now we have script, where you have memory hardness. Yeah. You can go on to make contract computation. Um, as a one factor to solve a proof of work puzzle. This will be Ethereum 1, so we have a more CPU uh, centered proof of work. So the there will be mining on Ether. It will be. Yeah. But uh, what about GPUs? Will It's not known yet. CPUs? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the goal is to, to be as egalitarian as possible, which is CPU. Kind of CPU. <laughs> Um, but the, the uh, Ethereum 1.0 system will not be uh, uh, safe against, uh, against uh, specialization and using of GPUs. It's just, you buy some time. You buy some time until those effects come into play again. Uh, <coughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. would, would that uh, the, the 51% attack or all the other attacks on, the, on any blockchain would that be the single point of failure? And if I have a contract which is basically Skynet, mm -hmm. does it fall apart if some if some entity gets over those fifty one percent? I mean, does the whole network, everything, all contracts in Ethereum fall down if that happens or not? Uh, no. What for, what what happens is you will lose the value of the underlying currency. So basically, you will lose also the value of your contract's cash because it's compromised. Because if something like a 51% attack happens, uh, everyone knows, well, someone earned something without doing what we all agree on. So if this is destroyed. What you still have is, uh, is the data, the blockchain itself. But it would be a, a big hit uh, towards the consensus and what so, so, so if that would happen, this guy falls kind of, I could say, okay, this is the point in time of that contract, how it was, I'll copy it to a new Ethereum. If the global community can organize this. So this is analogous to a political system where um, one party forms a coalition to get a majority vote and then decides to do something crazy like let's revert to fascism. And the 49% of the population goes, you've got to be kidding, um, and decides 
no, no, at this point in time to, to no, form no, 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 no. It's basically we all agree we have contracts, and then some lunatic goes in and says, "I'm gonna put hashing power, and I'm just mm -hmm. gonna destroy the world." Sure, that's a single point, and you can be for at that point and say we we choose to ignore that, and that's the. In effect, that it becomes a yeah, but yeah, can't the because the no, no. The, the, the point is, all the negative properties of the Bitcoin network are inherited because they use a blockchain. Okay. So, yeah. so your answer is yes. I mean, okay. <laughs> but in, in Bitcoin blockchain, yeah. you also cannot uh, create arbitrary coins just because you have more than fifty percent. It just can deny service. That you no, <laughs> with the fees, with the fees, you can uh, yes, say you I, can claim fees. But I cannot. Uh, uh, fake another's uh, after signature. Oh, but you can revoke transactions. <coughs> yes, okay, of course I can do this, but I cannot uh, create You can double spend. Okay. I can, yes, but not create arbitrary or just a... Uh, more money. Okay. Yes, make more, more money. More money. You, 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 you can, you can. Oh, because mm -hmm. if you assign yourself fees, which are exuberant, then uh, one would be slightly suspicious, okay, this guy gets thousand something in fees. But if it continues long enough uh, on, yeah. yeah, there you have it, yeah. So you can make more than the 21 million? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another mm -hmm. question, would that be a bit kind of sleep? Because I could actually... Mm. It's a social phenomenon. We don't have to forget it's everything. What mm -hmm. is the value of Bitcoin is uh, in the beliefs of people. And the vested power and the vested interests in this. So there is kind of a, a big uh, debate going on, who is going to be the next leader. Probably, I'll come back to it later, it will be a matter of cooperation, competition, some things will be obsolete. I have some kind, uh, I, there are some signs for Bitcoin that it will be, well, it will kind of sleep in this status, what we have now, but uh, it's, it's not clear yet. So I, I have a question to the the whole coding thing in, in Ethereum. And excuse me if this question is stupid because I'm just not an IT guy in that sense. But like how much um, memory or like how much code can I put into such a contract? Um, huh. Theoretically what you can afford. What you yeah, theoretically a lot. I would say twenty uh, two hundred and fifty by two Byte codes or something like this, which is enormous. But you pay for each storage location, you pay for each code location, what you're going to use, and you pay for each uh, Execute. execution of, yep. of, uh, of one ah. byte code. So this also protects against uh, spamming, like contracts which run forever and block the network. So what you pay for the contract is the award of the miners? Uh, yes, this has been decided in this way for now, yeah. It was decision between burning it or as a reward for miners, but for now it's it's miners, yeah. I might have a, I don't know, I also not from IT, so I might have also a stupid question. What about these there is a discussion going on about the uh, side, side chains, yeah. So it's quite just simply shift, shift it. I'm not a cryptographer by myself, but I try to get the the late the gist of it. Um, I think it's still debated if you need on such side change also proof of work or not. If not, uh, you can basically uh, live with just one blockchain. This could be good. Yeah, yeah could be. Uh, however, what you block with this evolutionary path is innovation blockchains. Uh, so this is the debate, the trade-off. Do you want more short-term uh, benefits? You want to live with centralization or you want to Mm, take the risk and uh, and go for another blockchain technology. This is so a side chain is just a new kind of a blockchain. As, no, it's a peg towards another blockchain. So you 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 parking one uh, token outside and you you uh, manipulate it, you work with it, and then you transfer it in. And in this time where you Transfer it to another chain. It's. Um, I believe you're killing it. You're killing it. You're not parking it. 
You're killing it. Yeah, okay. you're killing it. You're, it's, it's a dead address. No, no private key. Okay. You send in there, and there is a contract which puts it into another currency. You, you get another currency on another wallet on the other chain. And then you so basically, okay. you're only killing money against each other. So okay. If I want to have a Litecoin, I have a Bitcoin. I send a Bitcoin to this address where I know I will get back the Litecoin. But the Bitcoin is. But the Bitcoin from this address can never be sent anywhere else anymore because it doesn't have a private key. Okay. But it's linked to a contract that it gives you back a Litecoin. Okay. And the other way around, how, how would you I have, I have, Seriously, I have no idea. I'm a mechanical engineer. <laughs> So who does execute the, con the code? Because if I have some some code that makes a conditional transfer, yeah. uh, then uh, to to check balances, everyone has to uh, execute this code. Yeah, right now everyone ex executes the, this code in the process of mining. One can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's the. Or in determining balance. What is that exactly? Determinating yeah. balance. Just. Yeah, ju just to, to see uh, how much everyone ah, owns. The state, state. so the state, the state yeah. What do you have? This uh, programming, uh, with this programming uh, addition, is you have the state of, of the ledger and you have a somehow the stack trace of the execution of the virtual machine also formed or saved into this. Uh, into the state transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, are you actually looking at the state or at the currency? Because the currency is actually on top of the protocol, so the currency is just the predominant the currency because it has it's special. That's what all the mm -hmm. So you're actually always looking just at the state machine, and everybody decides on the state machine somehow, and not mm -hmm. actually at the currencies and all the other ideas, but actually on the state of this thing. Well, I mean, what, what I got, what I understand is, yes, separate concepts, code, stat, state, like storage and whatever, and, and value and balance. But it's a number at the end, you know? Of course, it's yeah. a number. Uh, this programming state, they use something like Merkle trees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just to say it easy, if you have all these yeah. different contracts running yeah. on top of it, it's more or less always one state. Let's say every block has one state, and it's the sum of all these things on top, Ethereum or the other currencies or the other contracts sums into one state, and everybody decides on this state. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes it's like I think that's the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this? Not the currencies, actually. They're not looking at the balances or anything, but mm -hmm. actually at one super nice number. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> is a new state, everything inside so, so, of currencies. Oh, um, I don't know. Are you a programmer? Yeah. So, so, so what they have is like a low-level scripting language. Yeah. yeah. And, and and like I think it's like an assembler that's running on top of a virtual machine. Yeah. Yeah. And this the virtual machine has a state. Has a state. Decides yeah. on the state, and it has all yeah. the stuff running on top. Each block is a new sign. No, I just wanted to <laughs> say because so, so deciding on every different yeah. currency and every different country, but actually deciding on all yeah. of this. Yeah. So, so, so what, what I think what they exclude is like randomization. Yeah. Because that wouldn't. Work yeah, yeah. for global consensus yeah. and also external input is also hard so you, you need some provider for information and what they also do is like um, calculating the amount of time spent for executing it yeah. and, 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 okay. 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 Um, okay let's continue so we have this running code everyone computes it everyone is uh, put into consensus through incentive mechanisms blockchain mining. Uh, now I come to this point to this accompanying distributed services where you would need to actually make some real world impact, some real world data basically. So uh, currency, currency uh, um, values for example, uh, exchange values uh, or some events in the real world. And you would uh, use the concept of trusted data feeds in some sense to, to mitigate the risk of failure of, of such kinds of, of inputs. For example, through, uh, through shelly coins, 
it's it's a it's a, a betting mechanism where uh, where people try to or where people give their vote towards a value what it really is and if they are within the majority they get rewarded. Uh, also to have state from outside we cannot do away with yeah, human judgment in some circumstances uh, however what you can do is you can be you can have all the arbitration on very specialized agents where they have some form of reputation and they would step in if there is some dispute so it somewhat simplifies the problem of maybe complex decisions, decisions uh, but doesn't make it win, of course. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, so what I imagine from uh, the societal standpoint of view, you have lower barriers of entry, everyone can participate. You, you can foster entrepreneurship everywhere. I mean, the guy having a computer in Africa basically has the same a mode of operation, the same access as everyone else. Uh, you can have higher specialization, as I mentioned, with the charges uh, everywhere around the world, which will lead to better allocation of human talent and so on. And uh, yeah, all in all, I think it's a great tool to think about in terms of social mobility. So you provide more chances to, to more people, basically. This is what I get about it. Okay, next slide. I'll just show this uh, working. I prepared a contract in the HLL, so it is the high level language, which is then compiled down to assembly, which in turn is compiled down to uh, the various uh, bytecodes there are. And uh, so remember, we have a storage in each contract, uh, a code, which you can see here, and the balance. Um, HLL is Python-like, and to see what this contract actually is about, well, it's a crowdfunding, crowdfunding process. Uh, each storage can be located with a key from zero till uh, 256 square, square. <coughs> and uh, it's also uh, an integer value uh, where to store the data. So what you want to do, I will start here directly. Uh, you choose a location in, this, in, this, uh, in, the, in the storage and you make this the state of the contract. So if it's zero as every time everything is initialized with zero, you would initialize the, the contract with, uh, with the essential crowd funding. I, I, I think what you, you should mention is that this code is uh, executed in a loop at the first time. So it starts with zero, but then at, at the same time it also runs again. Okay. And it, yes, I just read the white paper. So 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 the so the, so the state zero means it's the first execution, uh, the first time it runs. And since there is no return error or stop message, it repeats and goes into the second clause. So this happens in the first day step. Mm -hmm. So and and just the next time it is executed, the state is already set to one. So it's just the second one. That's mm -hmm. that's for those who are coding here. So what you say, you basically did a return or? No, if, if, if an error happens, a stop or return, then the program stops to execute. But you're in the if state zero and it runs then, I think at the bottom there is no special thing. So the, the program just sees, okay, nothing has happened, so I run it again. Ah, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. That's the initialization here. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so basically what you have, you fill out the contract for the first time, state zero. Yes. Uh, you get from the outside the sending address, which will be in our case the, the, the funder, no, the fundee, sorry, so the one who should receive the, uh, the, the, the money. Uh, you give it a name, which is in the first uh, par par parameter, and you store it in another location. You store a deadline, so you take a timestamp, you <coughs> add uh, 
the amount of hours I have here, so hours divided by 24, yeah, days divided by 24. What day was that? Yeah, 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 yeah. At least uh, one month or something. One <laughs> month and a little bit more, but more or less. <laughs> yeah. but but what call it in a in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is just a draft that came out yeah. there by myself, hacked it together. To, to the same. And the second, uh, the 1004 storage location should be the limit until it's funded. Okay, uh, the next time someone wants to transact, can be anyone who wants to chip in into this funding, uh, funding contract. And as we change the state to one, it will discard this block and will jump to here. And the first thing you want to check is if if the funding has expired. So if the current timestamp is higher than what we've uh, computed here, <coughs> if it is, you can choose what to do. Basically, as it is with Kickstarter, you would return it for, to everyone who's chipped in. And this happens here. So uh, you, each, each contract can send Back and it would take each funder, so this is a loop, and everyone who's chipped in will get uh, his funds back minus a fee. So it's also arbitrary, just one percent fee, uh, which can basically go to the crowdfunding platform itself or whatever you, which policies you want. And I assume at the end of this block, the state will be changed again. I can see it. Yeah. And this would be the the end. Uh, the, if, if, the, if it runs again after this time, the state will be a value where none of the blocks matches and it will run through without doing anything. Exactly, it's two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's two. And then the contract is dead, you cannot do yes. anything at, uh, if you don't uh, make a branch for it if it is two. What you really should do is uh, terminate the, the contract, suicide rate. Is this done? Is this contact and removed somehow from the blockchain? Or is this yep. What does yep. it include yep. code to then to reverse it? So if you meet, if you pass your time without having met your um, total balance, does it then have to reverse it explicitly? It does the reversing this block with the sense to fun, uh, yep. here. here. That's this line. So that's if we fail. If, yes. Ah. So, so hmm. I think one bug is that I is never incremented. Yes, yeah, true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, so that, that, that now, now we are the state of talking about right. Turing completeness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be right. uh, there are some other minor issues. Yeah. Uh, what, what, for example, uh, how to calculate this fee and mm -hmm. everything, and yeah, the suicide thing. I mean, box is a cool issue anyway in this context. Of yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 So, so it's really good to the, avoid the, them. <laughs> a good question is how, how to update later, the yeah. code. <laughs> yeah. Send a patch to the doctor. Mm. Uh, one question about the gas, because uh, how do you... Uh, so you have Ethereum mm -hmm. and you have to pay to initialize the contract. <coughs> so for the data and the code you pay, yeah, yes. and that's in Ethereum. And it gets uh, changed into gas, more or less. Yes. So if you program it wrong, uh, the gas it goes away. You have no gas left. I think yeah. you so, 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 so I haven't. So so the two things of the gas. So, 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 so I've I've just skimmed the paper, and yeah, what they say is. <laughs> uh, so, so, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm wrong after reading it for ten minutes. Like so, just either either um, it runs out of gas then your m money you have sent with the contract is gone, okay? Or, then so, so this means you, you, yeah, if you install the code, you have to send a special uh, message with the gas price in Ether and the code to somewhere else to install it. So I've understood it. So if everybody actually has to check if the code is correct, because if you, some guy makes the code, I send, like here I send, stuff to the crowd, to no, crowdfunding and then no, the gas goes. No, no, what I mean is you have to get the code into the system. And with that code, you're also sending Ether as gas to, to execute it. Yeah, but so it, it, it has to run 
Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but, it, but, it, but it runs somewhere else where the miners are. But to get it, like, there is this network, and all of them need to get the code. Mm -hmm. But if, but if you call yeah, it, and, and what I mean is, if you don't send enough gas to execute the code, your gas is gone away, and the code is discarded. Yeah. And it reverts back, right? That's no, no, but it, it, it reverts back the part which is not spent if it is run correctly. <laughs> so, 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 so either it is gone and you are, you are somehow... But so I pay gas every time somebody no, no. sends money? No, no, the, no, only the first time. Only, okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think every, uh, each time you make a transaction or send a message, you need some kind of gas. Like the transaction pays for... But maybe, money. maybe. I mean, I have read like this, every yeah. detail. And they also <laughs> cha they changed the policy and from 3.5 to uh, POC 4 in this regard. So, yeah, we are constantly so, 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 surprised. So, so, by so, so it is not symmetric. What I mean is, better send more gas and get it back than yeah, yeah, don't yeah. send enough yeah. gas because then it's gone. Lose everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. There was another question. Is there an testing environment if you just want to? <laughs> yes, there, yeah. there is certainly a test now. I'm just guessing, but yes. Yeah, they implemented it by now in the in the in the latest uh, version on, on GitHub. Uh, there's a debugger mm. included in the client. And there are some other mechanisms to to use. just do it offline as well to test it. There's a simulator. Uh, yeah. So but it's all a different question now for yourself. Because I just remember seeing the presentation when this was introduced. It was said that um, at some point in the future they would launch this and then you could uh, buy, buy, buy and change mm -hmm. the date. Change the date? Multiple times, right? I think it's difficult <laughs> to decide. <laughs> so, but that hasn't happened yet. No, no, no. Oh. And, no. Can still invest, so to speak. They don't have a really number yet for the mm -hmm. max either, right? They will announce it today, probably, or this uh, days in the Toronto Bitcoin meetup. Okay. What will they announce? The date? Or the, the date, probably, also. And the, and the final the terms. Not, but, uh, what? terms. I think the terms are quite more fixated uh, despite the, the, the date. The date, yeah. Is it testnet already running? I didn't understand. Yeah, so yes. I could already... Mine. You can mine, but... It's it, the yeah. testnet, of course, but uh, yeah, you playing around with contacts and things like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it intended to that everyone can run, run his own uh, blockchain? I can I make my own blockchain for testing or my own uh, currency? No, yeah. probably. There is one running by all the testers, right? It's open source, so you can always fork yeah. it. So okay. fork it and if I can do this and cut this, yes. what I want. Basically, yeah. you can and create my fork own and currency. play around. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, one of the tricky things in developing this sort of code is um, proof that the code works as intended. Uh, and I had really, I, I suppose, two questions around that. Is there um, been any development using proof tests like COP or something like that? So tools that are designed to prove that code does what it says. And the second one is, what happens if we're not running, um, if, if the VM version you're running has a bug and then your contract gets dumped despite your best intentions at the time? So, for example, as a result of that sort of bug. I couldn't get the first uh, so question. Um, uh, how to prove the code is actually working yeah. by reading it, bro. <laughs> so that's not proof. That's, um, as we know, you can't case, so prove that any code that's working. Yes, you can. But that's a story for another day. Yeah, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Everybody yeah. understands Kickstarter, but if I show somebody this, yeah. see, this is my Kickstarter. Yeah, you yeah. transfer it. You, yes. make you need the usability. <laughs> yes, yeah. the usability. Yeah. But yeah. I understand it's a good friend. But I should, you, you can prove that it's. Against the spec, but but it, but you cannot prove that the spec is what you intended. So, so there's, a, there's always a, there's always a semantic difference. I wrote some stuff. I think it does this, and there's some other stuff which is yeah, that's the, that's cool. against this the specification. Um, you, you can express that in a programming language, uh, like, and then you can prove that the implementation yeah, yeah, matches yeah. that spec. Yeah. I, I think the contract put it put it out. 
Yeah. And then make a hash of it and say that's the hash. No, 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 no. no. I, 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 I think I think testing is actually simple because you could simulate it and then explicitly say if like this machine here has probably just two states. So I have two modes, execute mm. them and just check if check if the states are what they are. Oh, so that's so, so testing is easy. To this specific no, no, it, all, all of are them are like that, but, and yeah. they, because they have. Like they only have a fixed state and and a FRML storage for, for one cycle mm -hmm. in the memory. So you, you can explicitly check what the states are doing mm -hmm. in, in in offline, okay? But the actual problem is what you say is if there is a bug, yes. I mean then probably everything is broken. And the second one is mm -hmm. if if you want to update this later on. And I think then I don't I haven't read everything, but uh, there needs to be a provision to update something. <laughs> But there are also bugs in human memory that you remember facts differently in the past. So you might have specified what you intended then, but if that's still what you think you... But this time you can you can do the specification explicitly in a program. And yeah, 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 then you need yeah. the, the lawyer. So uh, it, as long as everyone has the same faulty program, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we still agree. Yeah. Yes, that's the gist of it. As far as, 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 like open as, far as I remember, the, 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 uh, the, there was some kind of majority update system in, in okay. that if the majority of, of the users agree to it, then uh, you can update the, the code. Yes, it's automatic. It's a, yeah. More or less, it's the yeah. system. I mean, there, there is an update mechanism, but I don't know no, if I, I could go change parallel to Ethereum and make another client, and if I'm good enough to speak to 51% of the people, yeah. I could. No, 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 I mean, in, no, no, not like that. You mean on the micro level? On, on no, no, I mean, level, th th there are messages on a network, like the transaction message. One of them is to install this as, as, as a player in the system. And how to I, okay, you're talking about contract. yeah, on the okay. code, yeah, but there is also an update mechanism. I, I don't think know what works. I, should, I don't think update mechanism should be implemented. Uh, I think they, they have to, and they are they I don't are, think yeah. so. but I think it's a serious, uh, it's a serious security threat. problem because when you're able to update, you can go to you can no, no, um, but you can at least you, you, you have. You, you have a private key as the one who has initiated this one with the signature. So you, you can identify yourself as someone who is able to update it. Yeah, but yeah, you but can change the conditions of the yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, so that's super dangerous. That's super dangerous. Yeah, but, so, so, but, but the point is there is an update mechanism. I don't know how it works. But can it be switched off so you can have two possibilities? So yeah. Updates and no updates, maybe. So. You can manifest it in the code actually. And in 3.5, it still was that the, that the memory storage of code and the memory storage of this storage was the same, like okay. linear memory model. So you could just override from zero on, and you have another contract. But of course, it has to be implemented before. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's so, yeah. So you have to implement an update mechanism like yeah. before. Okay. So or you do it by accident, and of course, yeah, quite rewrite really right. the same. Well, yeah. So the program so the code could, could rewrite the same. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I'm not sure in 4.0 how because I they changed it. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I don't see this very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we, we will read the code and we know yes. what yes. update yes. is. Yes. Okay, let's continue. As a homework. <laughs> let's continue. Uh, very quickly, then, the other states. So, this is if it's not yet expired. Uh, you retrieve the balance of the sender. What he or she already uh, funded or, or uh, added uh, or chipped in. So you get this from the address, uh, determining the, 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 <coughs> the funder. If it's greater than zero, so he already um, added some value, you increase it so you can chip in once, twice, as you wish, in this case. Uh, if there is a restriction, how many funders, because of the memory layout, if it's bigger than 900 uh, people already funded, you just return the, uh, the, the value what he or she was trying to... But I understand, if, and before, if it's expired, why do you return to the people? It's no, but it's, this is, this is yeah, before it expires, this is the else. Code. Yeah, but before, when it expired, you, it, you also returned to the what they chipped in or not? Yeah, because the Why? project failed, so to speak. Uh -huh, but there was no condition if it failed, yeah. it was just ex if it expired. Yeah. 
No, no, that's, that's, that's the last if is the important one. If the contract balance is greater uh, equal than uh, the then target then value, then something happens. Uh, okay, yeah, right. yeah. That's maybe what you miss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, so this is all full of great work stuff. Yeah. As you said, if the condition is fulfilled uh, that it's not yet expired and the balance of the contract is above the, the limit of funding, so storage, uh, storage 2004 limit, then you send uh, all the balance of the contract to 1001, which is the funding in our case. This is the success of funding pro uh, of the project. And, and pay the rest of the crowdfunding platform? Yeah, it's just okay. Uh, but but I, I think that's that's used above there. It's yeah, it's right. just that. Uh, how do you see it? Yeah. No, so, so have no comments in this. Yeah, but pay the rest of it. Can you go back one slide, please? Next bit? Yeah, yeah one back. Because here, the li line 18, pay the rest without language. Okay, always. Yeah, there are no comments yet, so I just okay. made up the barrier where I will name it. Okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, yeah, no, no slashes is up here. Uh, what about this That's memory missing. locations? Why are there no variables? Or are they? Uh, why is this like assembly? No, uh, it, 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 it has this storage, contract storage, is a key value store storage, which is locked into the blockchain. Yes. That's, then, that's what's the state. And everything else that's there is just for one execution of the program. But wouldn't it be nicer if, if you named those locations somehow before? It's just a matter of <laughs> yes. <finding it. laughs> the code is not perfect. But you can't, you can't yet do it. You cannot define the constant. The compiler is not yet capable of doing it. But in, in, of course, in the future, you yeah, name the index of what you want. And there's also the uh, visual programming language where you have exactly this kind of functionality added on top. Yeah. With Visual Studio, maybe you can use <laughs> So I guess the point is you can you can implement any high level language you want on top so long as it compiles down uh -huh. to, yes. to the bytecode. Yeah? So yes. you could do this in Haskell. But, but this is not bytecode. This is also already Python-like. There is, Python -like. There is a list Lisp-like uh -huh. uh, already, which is working more complete even. And uh, yeah, more to come probably. It's not it's to check. Check. <laughs> yeah. okay, let's check the time because. Uh, yeah, so this is all one past. Everything, everyone okay? We call now to, to Mihai. Uh, I, I have, I have another question. So, so that's the contract. So how, how would I, how would, how would uh, uh, different currency on it be spread? Uh, very simple, three lines of code if you want. More sophisticated if you need. Uh, so you could store virtual amount in each of the storage for each owner of a of this currency. So the one, the guy with the address 12345 has uh, 17. The one with 12346 has 18. And that's uh, how you would do a subcurrency. But yeah. so, so in the white paper there is the code. But it's limited how many addresses can be, right? Remember? Yes, it's 256 bits. Key uh -huh. 256 bits when you, uh, Okay, if I'm someone interested in your crowdfunding uh, and want to put, uh, give you my money into this crowdfunding uh, uh, project, in which way I can check if this code uh, does what I think it does and that you don't <coughs> betray me? If you're a programmer, you can. Yeah, well, but will, will I see just the bytecode or will I see the source code? The there are two ways. Yeah. First, signing the. Oops. Ah, okay. This, that's so far from the recording. Uh, <laughs> let's 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 stop. <laughs> uh, but please come back uh, quite soon because we have uh, a, a, a appointment. Yeah. Sky meeting. Ja, das ist ein
Ich habe ja, 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 ja